Thank you. Uh, so it's my first time in Los Angeles, so I'm especially grateful for the organizers for the opportunity to be here. Uh, so my talk uh, will consist of two parts. So the first part I will recall uh, some basic definitions and facts about interacting particle systems and uh, more specifically uh, asymmetric simple exclusion process. And then I'll formulate several asymptotical uh, results about uh, second class particles uh, in uh, uh, ASAP. And then in the second part I will uh, discuss like how to prove them and this would require a uh, certain algebraic structure behind these processes and so we will discuss this like random works on Hecke algebras. Uh, so let me start with uh, definition of like ASAP which is like a symmetric simple exclusion process. Uh, so uh, what is this? So the basic object is a configuration of particles on integers. Uh, we have integers and every integer we might have either a particle or a hole. So that's a configuration. Then we have a certain dynamics on these particles and uh, the shortest way to define this is to say that every particle has two Poisson processes attached to it and like one Poisson process is of rate one and when uh, this process somehow produces a point like this processes, uh, uh, they uh, somehow represent time and when this process uh, uh, gives a point then uh, this moment of time the particle tries to jump to the right and another process is of rate Q and uh, when uh, like we get a signal from this Poisson process then the particle tries to jump to the left. So Q is less than one so these particles they jump like either one step to the right or one step to the left and like the, but they have more tendency to go to the right. But there is also like this exclusion rule uh, like exclusion process that if a particle if a position on the right is uh, filled by some other particle then this jump does not happen. So subject to this rule uh, we have uh, this simple uh, evolution of particles on um, on integers. Uh, so once we have this definition, uh, so like there are like plenty of questions that one can ask and so let me first recall like the answer to probably one of the basic questions are, like what are stationary measures of such a process. So if we have uh, yeah, such uh, dynamic, so dynamic rules, so what we can, um, yeah, so what can we say about stationary measures. And like uh, the essential part of the answer is that like the following measure is stationary. Uh, so like as for definition sake I will have these random variables at a t of z which is the number of particles position z. z is an integer so this can be either 0 or 1 at every position we have either particle or hole. But in general like these uh, random variables they have very complicated joint distribution. But it turns out like for yeah, general process and then like complicated evolution of uh, this joint distribution with time. Uh, but uh, stationary measures turn out to be like much simpler and it turns out that uh, if we pick uh, arbitrary real between 0 and 1 and just fill every position independently of each other with particle with probability p then this will be a stationary measure for uh, ASAP. So it's like some short uh, computation, not immediate but short. And uh, this basically like somehow the most interesting stationary measures for this system. Uh, so we have uh, this family of stationary measures which are parameterized by, uh, by a real number between 0 and 1. Uh, but we will be interested today in questions not about like stationary, it's about like, like non-equilibrium uh, questions and uh, like the basic object will be what happens with this dynamics when our initial configuration is as follows. So we have particles on zero and to the left, everything is filled by particles, and from one and to the right, everything is filled by holes. So this is a, 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 like initial configuration, this is deterministic, it is called step initial condition. And then when time, yeah, when time, uh, like with time, so these particles try to jump to the, like to the right, so there will be evolution, like evolution goes like these particles jumping to the right, and um, yeah, something, happens and this something is not stationary of course because yeah we have this drift to the right. And uh, like this uh, when we when we look at all the integers we do not have uh, the yeah no but locally I will say lo we have local stationarity yeah local stationarity we have I will formulate this on the next slide yeah <laughs> of course yeah but like if, 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 like there is always a region when we have 
like only empty or empty configuration, we always have a, <laughs> a region when we like there is no dynamic and we have some non-trivial region, uh, regions in between. Uh, but yeah, but yes, that's exactly like uh, what. Uh, okay, so this 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 the sort of questions is, is uh, started for like more than fifty years, starting from the works of Harris, Liggett, Rost, and like. Uh, many uh, subsequent uh, works and I will formulate like only like very small part of uh, existing results uh, so uh, namely what exactly happens with uh, ASAP which starts from this initial configuration so what happens with time what is like uh, what is called like hydrodynamical behavior and uh, yeah if we uh, somehow want to describe the density of particles which is like the probability to find a particle at certain uh, Position. So what we will see, there will be a region far to the right when we have the density zero. There will be a region far to the left when we have a density one. So somehow dynamics doesn't live there. And then in between, the density uh, will be linear. And more formally, uh, so this is a result uh, which proved by Angel Varis and Benassi Fouquet uh, like 30 years ago, is like the following. So if we have this probability like to have a particle at a certain given location, then uh, and we, then we have a sequence of uh, positions m, uh, which depends on time, then uh, we, uh, yeah, we basically assume that it we have some constant y. So we look at the position which uh, behaves linear, which behaves like uh, like it, it changes linearly uh, in time. And then the, if we ask like what is the probability to see the particle at this specific position, uh, so then the, this probability has a limit and this is like this density function. So we see a graph of this function on the previous slide. Uh, so this is like zero and one in trivial regions and linear function in an non-trivial region. So the probability to find a particle at given sequence of positions basically like y, which is fixed times t, which is time, so time goes to infinity, y is fixed, is this linear function like density of why? So this is the probability to find a particle in one position. But indeed, so one can ask what happens if we look not only on one position, uh, but like at some finite window. So if we fix certain number L, which does not depend on time, and we look at uh, this window around point y, uh, y times t, like plus, plus, minus uh, some fixed amount of um, distance. And then we will indeed see like local convergence to stationary measures. So that means that these random variables, like these occupation random variables, they become asymptotically independent and they converge to yeah, Bernoulli distributions uh, uh, with a parameter which is equal to the density uh, around this position y times t. So that's a piece of information like, for, uh, like about uh, classical and uh, like ASAP that I will need later. Uh, but I, like my talk will be more uh, like connected with a uh, somehow large object which allows not only uh, particles and holes but actually several different uh, classes of particles. So it's uh, either like various types of particles, various species, various colors. So I will use all of this in order to confuse you. Uh, and uh, how to define such a process. Uh, so uh, for this I would need to define slightly differently ASAP that I had before. So if I have just like particles and holes I will think about this as that I have two types of particles, which is like, yeah, two types of particles. And one of these types I, I call whole, but uh, nevertheless, so for these two types of particles, I am saying that one, is, one type is, like, so let's say, small, and the other is larger. Uh, and like one is type is strong, and the another one is weaker. And then I introduce the following operation of update. So if I have two neighboring positions, and I have this configuration in these two neighboring positions on my integers, and then some clock rings, I do the following procedure. So if I have uh, like a stronger particle on the left and weaker particle on the right, then stronger, stronger particles move to the right with probability of one. So this one stands for probability. These configurations always change into this and never changes into this. And when we have the opposite situation, when uh, some uh, stronger particle is on the right and weaker particle on the left, then they also swap, but they swap with probability Q. And with probability 1 minus Q, nothing changes. So that's a definition of update in two neighboring positions. And I can define my original uh, dynamics by attaching Poisson processes of rate 1 to every pair of positions, independent Poisson processes at every pair of positions, and then uh, uh, like yeah, running the time, and I will get exactly the same uh, ASAP as before. But this definition is better suited for uh, 
defining the dynamics for more uh, types of particles. So now I, I assume that I have not two types of particles, which are just particles and holes, but arbitrary, uh, yeah, arbitrary set of types of particles. And the only piece of information that I need about uh, this set is that I need linear order on uh, this uh, uh, linear order, uh, order on this set. So for every two particles, I should be able to say which of them is small and which of the, which of it uh, is larger. And then I run exactly the same definition. So the stronger particle is on the left, weaker particle on the right. We apply it update, and they change according to these rules. And there is asymmetry, so it's one here and Q in the opposite direction. So this is asymmetry, and this is um, yeah important for the definition. Uh, so this is uh, how yeah this is how uh, one can define ASAP for arbitrary. Uh, collection of species. So now I will be interested in asymptotic questions about uh, such models. And probably the, probably the simplest question of this sort, or one of simplest non-trivial questions of this sort, is the following. So assume that I have like an analog of step in, uh, initial condition. And to the left, I have first class particles and like the strongest particles. To the right, I have like holes or like the weakest particles. And in the middle, I have somehow the middle type of particles. So this is like second class particles. So standard uh, terminology here would be that this is first class particles, the strongest, this is second class, and these are holes. And let, uh, so this is like situation at time zero. And then what happens when time grows? Uh, so what happens with this second class particle? So this is, um, yeah, this is, it's, it, 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 it's uh, not immediately trivial, but there is like a beautiful short proof by uh, Pablo Ferrari and Kipnis uh, what happens in this situation. Uh, uh, the, like uh, it happens the following: so that this position of second-class particle, so it grows in time. When time goes to infinity, the position of particle also lives on the sky on the time scale t, but the position is random, and this distribution is uniform. Uh, in all non-trivial regions. So our dynamics, it lives on this region. And uh, yeah, if I divide by time t, then uh, this distribution S1 over t uh, divided by t, it will converge to a uniform random variable. So on the large, large interval, we can find the second class particle, like more or less uniformly on all this large interval. But now like, let me uh, slightly change the question and say, like, and ask what happens if second class particle originally is minus one. And then at zero, I have still first class particle. Then there are holes to the right and first class particles to the left. So it, 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 it is different from this configuration by just like one swap between minus one and zero. So what happens with say, this second class particle for this, uh, for this initial configuration? And probably if you see uh, this question for the first time, then like one reasonable guess would be that it would be the same, that it would be a uniform distribution from minus, uh, like, yeah, from like on the scale of, because the second class particle lives on the scale t, and we did just a swap of uh, one position, so it probably should not, uh, uh, should, it should not uh, affect the, like, uh, the large time scaling. Uh, but uh, yeah, for experts, for experts also know that, yeah, that's probably, not exactly the case, and this like minor swap of position actually uh, actually does affect the large diam behavior of the second class particle. Uh, but this was not known for ASAP uh, until recently. What happens like even like for this slight deformation, and like we proved in the recent paper with Alexei Borodin that uh, this distribution so it's again lives on. Uh, yeah, an all non-trivial interval, but the distribution, uh, like scale by t, is no longer uh, uniform, so it becomes basically quadratic. So this d of minus x, let me recall, is just like a linear function on in non-trivial interval, and then there is like some product, so it, it becomes quadratic. So this uh, this uh, distribution is somehow like on a large scale. It remembers that it was slightly slightly to the left originally, and we see so this green line is a uniform distribution, and red line is a quadratic distribution. So so it's, it's more shifted to the left. So it's more likely to find the second class particle to the left of zero. And yeah, that's an exact uh, distribution of second class particle. So that's the uh, first res asymptotic result about second class particle. And uh, yeah, I should mention that for Q equals zero, for TASEP, such questions, they were addressed. And it is like there is actually a general theorem by Cator Pimentel, uh, like who studied the asymptotic distribution of second class particle uh, for basically arbitrary initial conditions, uh, but uh, for, like, for ASAP, when Q is not zero, 
this, uh, yeah, this was not clear how to address these questions because like, both the methods of Ferrari and Kipnis and the methods of Carter Pimenta, they, yeah, it's, it's unclear how they can be um, applied for ASAP case. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and, and also it's clear that one can ask like, quite a lot of questions. Uh, it's not just like one swap, one can do like, yeah, there are like, quite a lot of questions that one can ask. So for a certain class of initial configurations, yeah, we proved uh, like what happens with second class particle. And of course, uh, as visible even in the, from this simple case, it's important what exactly we do originally. So this affects uh, the uh, limiting distribution. And also these answers, they are not the same as for the case Q equals zero. So for some questions, one can say that ASAP is just like, is a TASIP which just slowed down, but that's not what is happening here. So second class particles, it's yeah, like this distribution is like uh, non-trivially depends on Q. Uh, so this is one, uh, one uh, type of asymptotic uh, results about second class particles. So to let, me let me formulate a couple of others. Uh, so this one uh, will be about TASIP on integers, so TASIP Q equals zero. And uh, the, origin, the initial configuration will be as follows. Uh, we have uh, somehow step initial condition from here, first class particles from minus L to the left. And then we have a block of particles from one to L, first class particles here. And then second class particles is placed at zero. And then uh, we're interested what happens in, for with second class particle in somehow double limit. So time goes to infinity, but also this L goes to infinity. Uh, so if L is fixed, is actually, then the answer is actually covered by uh, this initial configuration. So uh, like we are interested also, like, in, but we are also interested in the case where what happens when L goes to infinity. And this type of question is related to like what is called shock, like in this case, like GE, GE shock. And here is somehow the story of what happens with this second class particle. So we have this L and probably, so we have double limit. It's probably better to think that L is some like large, number, uh, this is our initial configuration, and then time grows, and somehow the second class particle starts to behave somehow. And it's clear that when time is like less than L, then this particle is not still, is not here, so nothing happens, nothing really happens with second class particle. So because uh, it's blocked by these first class particles, and this hole somehow didn't come here, and this particle didn't come here, so it's just like it stands at zero for quite some time. But then, uh, when time grows and when time is linear on uh, linear uh, in L, then okay, there, there something is happening, and uh, what is happening actually is that the position of second class particle is of order t to the power one third, and the distribution it's random, and the distribution is given by uh, like uh, two independent tracy Widom distributions, like whatever this means. So this is like some known distributions from probability theory. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is like scaling, and this is uh, somehow the distribution. So like that's what happens with second class particle. So I should say that there are like quite a lot of C's, all these uh, constants, uh, they, these are all different constants. I, I didn't want to have notation from C1 to C20 in this slide, so all C's, are, they are all uh, different. So this is, uh, this is like, this is what happens originally when time is of order L. But then the story continues somehow, this adventure of second class particle, it's, yeah, so with time, uh, and time grows, and it's, it becomes like L to the power D, when D is between one and three halves. And uh, then it's um, possible to see that this second class particle, it, it somehow, it also, so like its distance from the second class particle to zero, it becomes larger even in terms of time. So here it was just like t to the power one third, then, then t becomes larger, but this exponent is also, be, also becomes even like even larger. So it's now like, okay, the exact answer is four over three minus one over d. So when d is one, it's one third. When d is uh, three over two, then this is two thirds. And this is some, yeah, like more or less linear uh, interpolation between uh, these two points. And uh, yeah. Even before we talk about the second class particle, what happens to the, the, the other particles in these time, in these time uh, intervals? Right? I mean, is there some sort of little shift that's going on, or are they still converted to something nice? Yeah, so it's, it, it's quite known. So even like for first class particles, it's, uh, th so there were workers of like, of like Patrick uh, Ferrari, uh, like what's going on with just like with height function. Uh, so it's, uh, 
Okay, so it's a, it's a, so, so, so like on the law of large numbers, it's, a, it's as always it's a solution to Burger's equation, and then as fluctuations like for this shock, the some special effects appear, which also related to two independent tracy widom distributions. So there, there, there is uh, like there is there are certain results from the literature what happens with uh, particles like with what happens with stacked particle here uh, or like with height function like how ma how many particles we have to the right. Uh, but like the second class particle question is a little bit more intricate. So it's related, of course, but uh, a little bit more intricate. But, but it's, it seems to me like, uh, I mean, knowing the, so I think if I understood your answer, you know the, you know the law of large numbers for the, for the first class particles. Yeah, sure. In all these time intervals. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so for, for if, if just for first class particles, yes. There's some number you'll answer. Yes, because it's a solution to Burgess equation. Okay, so if we have, uh, yeah, if we, have, we, we have some initial configuration, yeah, we have some, some low flash numbers is known for sure, yeah. And, and that doesn't, I mean, <laughs> just seems like the second class particles is, is evolving inside one of these, uh, inside the background given by the solution of this complex Burgess equation. So that should be, be some part of it. Maybe I'm just being in a. No, but this is like randomness. So, this, so the position of second class particle is uh, uh, random. So typically, if we have like just one characteristic going, like, uh, uh, like then it follows this characteristic. But in all these situations, there, there, like this second class particle always has a cha like as a, as a, as a high choice what characteristic to follow. That's that's what produces all these effects. And we uh, like these distributions, like uh, the difference of Tracy Widom distributions or like uh, whatever is here is there is like with what distribution it chooses one of available characteristics. So it's, and this is like more like a fluctuation question. So it's no, so this position of second class particle is not, it's, it's not about hydrodynamical uh, limit. It's more about fluctuations uh, around this hydrodynamical limit. So hydrodynamical limit for this sort of questions is not enough. It, this, this, this distribution leaves on the level of fluctuations. So what this is visible from this Tracy Widom uh, appearance. Uh, yeah, so it's, but it's a choice of, it's a choice of which characteristic uh, it chooses. Uh. <laughs> So in this particular initial condition, the second class particle stays at the point of shock. So the macroscopic solution is discontinuous at the point. And the second class particle is known to stay at the point of shock. And moreover, one can define the position of the shock as the position of the second class particle, whatever that means. The question is what that shock is doing mesoscopically, on what scale it lives, and so on. And so the results on the slide answer that question. What, what the shock is doing on the scale smaller than hydrodynamics. So this, the, these answers probably are universal whenever there is a second cross particle trap in, in a shock or a solution. Okay. No All right. So let me continue. Yeah, the description. So this is still like somehow there is like difference of independent tracy Widom distributions uh, for. Uh, like in this uh, limit regime, then there is a critical regime when time is of order L to the power three thirds. So this L is large, and then time, if when time is L to the power three thirds, then instead of independent Tracy Widom distributions, so like uh, like one sees the diff the difference of sections of uh, two area processes. And finally, when uh, time is uh, like really large, uh, uh, like larger than t to the l to the power three or two, then one sees a Gaussian distribution, and uh, particle leaves on the scale one minus one over two times d, uh, where d is uh, this exponent. And when somehow d goes to infinity, in a sense, when, uh, that corresponds to the case when l is fixed, then this will be just time t, and uh, this corresponds to like uh, the situation from like what that we, that we had here when like this. Uh, change of initial configuration was just uh, was just like uh, fixed or fixed site. So that's uh, that's somehow the story. Of what happens with uh, this second class particle on all possible uh, scales? Uh, so li let me formulate one more result about uh, second class particle. Uh, so th this would be about TASEP, which lives on a half space. So TASEP, it's Q equals zero. Then we have only high, only like positive integers where a particle can live, and we have a source which injects first class particles with rate alpha into this uh, half line. Of course, if uh, given that like the position one is occupied, so we have certain initial configuration, particles jump to the right, and then the source injects particles with certain rate, and like here the rate is one of interaction as before, but here the rate is different, and the rate is alpha. 
So the rules uh, here, uh, so I have also second class particle in the system and the rule is as follows. So the second class particle interacts with first class particle as before and if second class particle is at one and source produces a first class particle, then somehow it is replaced by a second class particle and uh, uh, second class particle disappears from the system. So uh, the source if second class particle is here and the source produces a particle, then it, it will be a first class particle here and second class particle completely disappears. So that's a special rule for a source. And then, uh, yeah, so from the definition, it's, yeah, it's visible that it's, uh, uh, the second class particle can be somehow pushed back into the source. So if these particles jump to the right and they are somewhat faster than the second class particle, then it's yeah, it's pushed back to the left, pushed back to the left, then this source produces particles, and it's possible that the second class particle ends up uh, eliminated from the half line and it can never return. The question is, like, with what probability uh, does this happen? And uh, here are the answers. So for, so for this uh, initial configuration, the first k positions are occupied by first class particles and second class particles are originally at L. So if a source is, like, not that strong, if alpha is less than one half, then the probability is just alpha to the power L minus K, that the particle exits uh, the line. So it's, it doesn't depend on K, it just depends on this uh, difference. I don't know how intuitive is this, but yeah, that's uh, the result of computation probably. Uh, that's more or less uh, intuitive that, uh, uh, but like it, it is known that this uh, model the phase transition happens at alpha equals one half, and the answers for alpha greater than one half, the answers are more uh, involved. So there is a certain specific formula which I do not require you to read uh, in all detail, just like some somewhat complicated formula for the function rho alpha of z. z is an integer. Uh, here it's integer from 2 to plus infinity and this is the expression for rho of 1. And then the probability that the particle exits the half line from this original configuration is given by the value of this function plus some terms. So to say something simple, so if L is equal k plus one, if we do not have this difference, then it will be just like the value of this function, rho alpha of z. So it will, this thing will be one, and this will think will, be, will cancel out, so it will be just uh, rho alpha of z. And in particular, if second class particle is at one, and there are no other first class particle in the systems, it will be one minus, one over four alpha. So if alpha is very large, then the, then the second class particle exits the system with probability one, which is quite reasonable. Uh, so that's the answer in this question. So I uh, presented three uh, results about second class particles, uh, which uh, somehow, yeah, which I think uh, they are non-trivial uh, and, and uh, new, but uh, they somehow all follow from a certain uh, algebraic construction. And in the second half of the talk, I will present uh, this algebraic construction. So the point is that all these answers, like both here, here, like all these expressions, they are all somehow present in, li in the literature as answers, but as answers to uh, seemingly quite different problems. Uh, namely, okay, so this second class particle in ASAP, it's strongly related to the result that I already formulated to hydrodynamical limit for ASAP with step initial condition. The uh, results about uh, second class particle in the shock, uh, they are related to the results uh, which um, go back to Johansson, like which uh, study how many particles of first class particles we have in the large interval of TSEP. Uh, and then it's, it works like this. If we have interval two is uh, very large, then the fluctuations in this interval are a difference of two independent Tracy Williams. If the interval of like critical scale, then it's airy process. And if it's too small, then these are Gaussian distributions. And second class particle in the half line ASAP. So these expressions that I had for the answers, they're related to stationary me measures for half line ASAP, which were discovered by Liget. And their correlation functions and these ex explicit expressions that I had, they were obtained by Groskinski. So somehow the answers are known, but the answers to seemingly very different questions. So all these uh, answers, they were answers about systems with just first class particles. They have nothing to do uh, with second class particles. And also it seems to be like three quite different system, uh, settings. So this is like matrix problems the Kanzatz is needed for these correlation functions. Here we need some like uh, integral probability tools to get these results. And here we have this high dynamical limit um, uh, by Angel Vares and Benassi Fouquet. So this is, seems to be three different settings. Uh, but there is actually like one algebraic construction which allows to transfer these results about first class particles to the result about second class particle. And that's uh, the, uh, what I will discuss next. 
So this is, um, uh, it's, I think it's natural to call this random work on Hecke algebras. And, uh, you know, and uh, there, there is somehow probabilistic language that I followed so far, but there is also, um, yeah, this more algebraic setting. And uh, this algebraic setting, it appears naturally if we have not just first class particles, second class particles and hold, but if we have uh, as, many as many types of particles as there are positions. So if we have, for example, n positions labeled by Zn, we also say that we have n types of particles uh, which are also labeled by Zn. So for each type, we have exactly one particle of this type, uh, which lives in one of these positions. And then the particle configuration can be encoded by um, permutation, yeah, just by permutation. And then we have uh, dynamics, ASAP dynamics on these permutations, which are, yeah, which are defined by these updates. That's just like a reminder how one defines uh, the update. And this, uh, this uh, uh, Sackham-Hau setting is uh, identical to the following more algebraic uh, construction. So let me briefly recall what is a Hecke algebra. Uh, we uh, have algebra, which um, so this construction works for arbitrary Coxeter group, but uh, so let me run this for just like symmetric group S n. So then we have certain like specific generators S i, which are near, nearest neighbor transpositions. Then the length of the word in this uh, group is just the number of inversion in symmetric group. And Hecke algebra it has a linear basis, which is labeled by elements from the group. So this is like a vector space of uh, dimension and factorial. And the multiplication in this algebra satisfies the following rule. So it's uh, when we add one more somehow nearest neighbor like uh, transposition, then we uh, either increase the number of inversions or decrease. And the rules of Hecke algebra somehow fills this and these are uh, the rules for the multiplication. And uh, the non-trivial part here is like of this definition is, is that these rules indeed define associative multiplication. And probably the main point of my talk is that this structure of Hecke algebra is actually like important and convenient for asymptotic questions about particle systems. Uh, so this is like extremely well-known uh, structure, but somehow it's uh, underappreciated that this is uh, useful for asymptotic questions. And in particular, all the results that I just formulated, they follow from the following, uh, again, like very basic fact about Hecke algebras, namely that this map, which sends like linear map, which sends like TW, T2, TW inverse, so that this is uh, like involution or like um, anti-homomorphism. So uh, it, uh, uh, it is like, it's almost like homomorphism. So if we, uh, apply it to the product of elements uh, in Hecke algebra, we get, yeah, we get the product of these elements, but, but just, we just need to reverse the order. So this is uh, here multiplication is, yes, yeah, so from HRR to H1, and here they go in the opposite direction. Uh, so this uh, somehow, yeah, this nice map, uh, the, like, Morally, they, they, that's what implies uh, this connection, the results about second class particles and uh, the results about like systems without uh, second class particles, just about like particles and holes. So, but okay, so this is just like Hecke algebra and this is like one particular, uh, yeah, particular nice uh, involution in it. So then like what is like some generalities, what is a random work on Hecke algebra? Uh, so if I, if I have certain generators, G1, GK, for example, I can define it as follows. So that I, if I have some position of my random work at some point, and then I multiply this position, let us say from the left, by one of these generators, when uh, like we have like associated like Poisson processes with every of these uh, generators, and when the point from this process comes, then we uh, multiply the position by one of these generators. Uh, so this uh, uh, that's what like one can call like random work on Hecke algebra with independent increments because yeah we multiply uh, by independ independently by one of this set of generators. Then uh, like this is like one source of randomness that uh, we uh, choose randomly what generator to use. But there is another source of randomness, and so it appears as follows: if we have element of Hecke algebra written in this form. Uh, and it is, yeah, it, is, it, it satisfies this. And then uh, this element can, the, can be interpreted as a random configuration on the Coxeter group itself. So we just say that this element H produces like element W with uh, coefficient kappa sub W. So this is another source of randomness. So ele every element of Hecke algebra produces random element uh, on the Coxeter groups. And then random work on Hecke algebra produces 
uh, yeah, some random work or like uh, on uh, random evolution of elements on uh, W. So this language is just equivalent to the language of updates that I used, and this is some sort of like uh, tautological vocabulary. So configuration corresponds to element, like update corresponds to multiplication by this T sub S, which corresponds to somehow a generator. Then, uh, so uh, like an important point is that if when I have like n types, I can always reduce the system to two types, like uh, particles and holes, or three types. So if I have certain linear order on uh, the set of types, I can subdivide it into intervals and think about particles in some interval as just like one type of particle. And this operation also has like a nice uh, algebraic interpretation as like projection to causes of parabolic subgroups. And uh, there is like what on uh, probabilistic language one can call this like class position symmetry. This, uh, this is a certain property which corresponds to this involution which swaps uh, W and W inverse, yeah? Yeah, so the evolution is updates by TS. The, the evolution, of course, is... Uh, so uh, this generator, that's a, that's a key point. So the, the dynamics on uh, the dynamics of ASAP and dynamics uh, and then just like multiplication by TS is just the same thing, tautologically. Uh, so, uh, so this works for any uh, Coxter groups. Uh, so we have like this sort of a symmetric simple exclusion process for any uh, of them. And it's useful uh, because at least like for in case like, like BC symmetry and for affine while group, it, it's connected also to the object which were studied uh, probabilistically like ASAP on half line or ASAP on a ring. Uh, so that's just uh, yeah certain um, construction. So of course like this tautology was realized in the literature. So the earliest uh, papers that I have found are the papers from 93, Alcaraz and Rittenberg and like with co-authors. And it was used uh, from time to time in many other papers. So I'm sorry that yeah, somehow it's hard to, to, to list all of them. Uh, but still I feel that this is somewhat underappreciated, that this is very convenient for uh, uh, asymptotic questions. So despite the fact that uh, yeah, this is in principle known. Uh, and what is like somewhat interestingly, the fact, the fact which corresponds to this uh, involution, applying involution in Hecke algebra, was, was discovered independently in uh, this series of papers. So this, here it was discovered for TASEP by Angel, Holroyd, and Romick. Then Amir Angel, Valko used this for ASAP, and also like we used this for stochastic six vertex model. So without reference to Hecke algebras, but it, it's possible like, to brute force uh, prove uh, this property for every system. And, but then it's important that one can use this to, like, to extract asymptotic information. And uh, so like in all of these three papers, there are like non-trivial uh, probabilistic applications of uh, this operation. So that's uh, the story about ASAP. Uh, but now like when we have this... Uh if, if we're gonna, is there probabilistic meaning to probabilistic basis? I don't know. It would be nice, of course. It's uh, somehow I, 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 so far not. I would say. You, oh, oh, okay. At least I don't know. It would be something fixed by this notion. Yeah, it's not all, all facts from Hecke algebra has some interpretation because it's just like the different language of the same object. But whether it has some, like asymptotic applications or something, it's yeah. I don't know. So. Let me, uh, like when, once we have this uh, setting of uh, random walk on Hecke algebra, so this construction uses uh, only TS, but one has like many more elements in Hecke algebras, and then it turns out that it's also reasonable to use some other elements to generate random walk. Uh, to generate random walk, which corresponds to certain known interacting particle systems. So for this, I need to briefly uh, tell you about a certain uh, distinguished probability measure on symmetric group, which is uh, uh, like, uh, referred to as a Mellow's measure. And it is proportional to the number, like Q to the number of inversions. Okay, so I will need this, like Q to the number of like somehow non-inversions. So Q to the number of elements which, which are in the right order uh, in a uh, symmetric group. So like, and this is the total number of pairs and this is like the number of inversions. And this is some like Q binomial. So, oh, just like Q number. So this is a certain probability measure on symmetric group, and it appears from probabilistic language as if we have like n species ASAP on uh, interval of length n, and we just run ASAP for like infinite time, we will converge to certain distribution, so this will be the distribution that we will converge. 
So uh, this is a uh, yeah, and this is like yeah, this is its explicit form, and uh, so it plays an important role in the construction that I will give on the next slides. And it's also important that like the, in the limit when n goes to infinity, this measure is actually becomes simpler, and uh, so it it, 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 it it cannot be defined just by formula, but it actually becomes simpler. Uh, so this object is simpler for uh, natural numbers or for uh, all integers. So if I have this Mellows measure, I can define a certain element in the Hecke algebra. So let me refer to this as Mellows element. That if I have like large group S n, then I choose its uh, just like a certain set of positions, and somehow I use generators only in this set of positions, and then I give them these weights given by this Mellows measure. Uh, so that's a formal definition, probably. I, so I will give like its probabilistic interpretation on the next slide. So there is a certain distinguished element in uh, Hecke algebra, which somehow, so where we have large, large, like from one to n, then we, figure we, we choose indices from a to b, and then we choose a uh, certain element, which is somehow, yeah, it's one dimensional representation of Hecke algebra for, for like for, for this sub algebra. Uh, so that's what, uh, that's the certain element. So this uh, like algebraically, that's the main property that I need. Uh, so if I choose W from this uh, symmetric like subgroup, uh, then uh, yeah, then it's then it's invariant. And then we like like I want to choose uh, as a generator this ugly expression. So let's not concentrate probably on it. So there is a lot of these like uh, elements, uh, but let's let me start with uh, construction like on a probabilistic language. So first let me take Q equals zero, and second uh, yeah, and second uh, yeah, let me just like take the only particles and holes. So it's, uh, it will be construction when I already split it n different species into just like some of them are called particles, some of them are called holes. So what I am doing, so I have a base of update which deterministically moves a particle with a hole in one direction and not in the opposite way. And then I'm doing the following. So I'm splitting all my like large Sn into certain like boxes, let us say of size four. And inside of the box, I always have somehow equilibrium. All particles are moved to the right, and all holes are moved to the left. So that's what uh, these Mellows elements are doing here. There is somehow always sort; they are always sorted inside the box. So at every moment of time, everything that I have inside the box, they, they, it is always sorted. So the particles are, uh, are moved, shifted to the right. And then I have this update T here, which updates like the rightmost position here and leftmost position here. So if this happens, this particle jumps, and then again, I just sort everything to the right. So this particle jumped, this particle becomes here, and then the sorting immediately moved it here, and these two particles are immediately sorted to the right uh, of this box. And uh, now the point is that I, I somehow know that at any moment of time I have equilibrium inside the box, and I treat the box as just like one position of interacting, interacting particle system. And the process that I see is that, okay, I have two particles here, three particles here, one here, and one particle jump, it becomes two and two. And the only uh, case when I do not have such a jump is that if the box is full, uh, all four positions were uh, uh, filled, then particle cannot jump in. And also, yeah, if the box was empty, then there is nothing uh, to jump. So this uh, random open Hecke algebra generated by these generators, they produce four exclusion tasers. So this is like uh, we, have, uh, we can have up to four particles inside every position from zero to four. And uh, if I do this for general Q rather than uh, Q equals zero, so I will also get some non-trivial system. So this is, um, yeah, so then I will need these Mellows measures and some information about this about Mellows measures, uh, but um, yeah, it, it, this defines certain process, and this process is present in the literature. So it's uh, it's called I think ASAP QJ. So here I used M, but like uh, ASAP QJ, it was uh, deter it was defined by uh, uh, Karinchi, Gardina, Redix, Asamota uh, five years ago. And uh, this is a, like a single species version, and also like uh, this construction. So, so this construction is like it lives on Hecke algebra, so it immediately de determines like uh, arbitrary uh, many species. So it's not like yeah, I used on single species, but actually this construction for arbitrary many species. Uh, so uh, yeah, and this construction reproduced like this also like multi species versions of these dynamics uh, which were introduced by Quan. 
Uh, and uh, also there is like a limit when m goes to infinity, so the size of the box goes to infinity. This is like a well-defined limit that actually simplifies the process. And from this ASAP QM, one gets like Q Tatsar uh, process uh, from uh, this construction, which was introduced, like simple species version was introduced by Sasamoto Vadati. Uh, so the point here that if we use various generators on um, Hecke algebra and we produce like random box on Hecke algebra, we still see an interest in interacting particle system. In particular, we can apply, we have all the tools, and in particular, we have this like involution tool from uh, Hecke algebra to apply in all of these uh, questions. And also, like an important point, of course, that this choice of this interaction just between uh, these two. Positions, it's just like it's just quite uh, arbitrary. It's just something which connects with existing processes. But I have a huge freedom, so I have, I can have any interaction between these blocks and these blocks. Um, well, there is like at least like some room for fantasy, and uh, we, all of these choices would produce certain processes on uh, these like four exclusion types of processes, or like yeah, and M exclusions. And uh, yeah, in particular, one can recover like some like more known models and probably get some new models from uh, this construction. Uh, if one uses, if one uses instead of this like update, one uses some other element of Hecke algebra in this like uh, any other interaction between these two uh, blocks. Uh, so yeah, one more model which I'll probably cover very briefly. So like this is like stochastic uh, six vertex model, which uh, we will hear more about it uh, today. Is uh, all, like also is, is also obtained by choosing a generator. So one needs to choose like as generators these elements y sub s x, which is just like T s, but somehow slowed down. We need to multiply it by, like to add a uh, term which corresponds to identity element, which somehow doesn't change uh, the uh, permutation. And then like a picture like this. So we should think that this is like one, two, three, four, five, or probably it's opposite way. One, two, three, position five. And then every vertex corresponds to the multiplication of any of such elements. So three, four correspond to this vertex. Then two, three will correspond to this vertex. One, two will correspond to this vertex. So uh, like multiplying this like from, yeah, from right to left, we will, yeah, we will, we will obtain such um, pictures, uh, but an important point here is that we use uh, like slightly different uh, somehow sources of randomness. We kill here a source of randomness which come from like we have deterministic random we have deterministic random work on Hecke algebra. So we, we just pick some specific order in which we apply el these elements so so that they form certain uh, like lattice or some. Uh, some picture on uh, the plane. So we, we just analyze some deterministic element of Hecke algebra, but still projection to Coxeter group uh, is non-trivial. So when we decompose like it uh, into um, bases, so these coefficients will determine probabilities, and th these probabilities are uh, non-trivial. So this is somehow random work with not uh, independent increments. And this is a random work on Hecke algebra with deterministic increments, but it's still somehow interesting uh, probabilistic object because of randomness which comes from the second step. Uh, so, okay, so probably let me just like very bri briefly say that one can use this construction not only for ASAP but for, yeah, but, but for other interacting particle systems in order to get like similar results about second class particle in uh, QTATSERP. So I guess I uh, probably can skip this. Uh, okay, so just like a similar type of application, second class particle exhibits some non-trivial behavior if we analyze uh, certain interacting uh, particle systems and apply this involution not for like ASAP process but for some other interacting particle system process which uh, you makes users of this like yeah boxes construction. So one can produce quite uh, a few of such results. So whenever we know hydrodynamical limit for the system, we can produce actually this type of result. Uh, so this is like for example, this is not for Q Tatsarp. And um, yeah, just like uh, let me concentrate on a general scheme. So like these applications uh, uh, like worked as follows that uh, like in probability we know quite a lot about processes which start with, uh, which start with step initial condition. So if we have uh, like there are like some integrable tools available and like in many other respects uh, this is like somehow the best studied um, processes. And then if we need to analyze a system which starts from some other initial configuration, uh, this involution tool, it, it allows us somehow to reduce this about like a certain question uh, for step initial conditions. Namely, when I apply this involution, so I have this reversal of terms. And this means that if I have a simple random work which starts from uh, on Hecke algebra, which starts with some non-trivial element, and then I run it for the time. Then after applying the involution, I can say that I first do uh, 
simple random work on Hecke algebra, which starts from identity. And then in the end, I apply the element of Hecke algebra, which corresponds to the initial configuration. And this is somehow, in probability equations, this is somehow, you, this can be easier to analyze because we know quite a lot about step initial conditions. And that's how all applications, asymptotic applications that I mentioned to today, uh, that's how they all obtained. So we, I had some non-trivial initial configuration, but I knew something about uh, step initial conditions and I can, could analyze like uh, what happens if we multiply by element of Hecke algebra in the end rather than in the beginning. So that's the main somehow simplification point from the point of view of probabilities. So it's, uh, um, we can reduce basically all questions to the questions about step initial conditions. Uh, and yes, but I also needed of course probabilistic inputs for, from uh, like we, I need to know some information about step initial condition and that's exactly like so I, I needed to use this like a dynamical limit for ASAP. I needed to use the results of like um, Johansson and some actually uh, generalization of them uh, to study a second class particle in uh, shock form. They said, and so on. So these answers, uh, so which were answers for different questions by this applying this involution, they become answers to the problems that I formulated about second class particles. So that's a general strategy, but of course there are some technical details in uh, basically all of these cases. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the main uh, idea of all these asymptotic results. So just a summary, uh, many known and some unknown uh, multi-species interacting particle systems can be interpreted as a random box on Hecke algebras. Uh, the structure of Hecke algebra is somehow it's somewhat underappreciated that this is important for asymptotic questions and for study of the systems and in particular this uh, basic fact about involution is a powerful tool for asymptotical questions uh, and of course uh, there is like tons there are tons of information about Hecke algebras uh, that yeah so there was already about questions about Kashdan linguistic basis but like there are like tons of inform algebraic information available for them of course it's a very uh, uh, natural and interesting uh, question whether it can be applied for probabilistic applications and there is certain potential that it can be useful yeah thanks for your attention Thank you.